Hello, my name is Nikita Veshikov and I'm going to talk about semi-supervised template attack. This talk was originally given at COSAD 2013 in Paris. I'd like to start with a motivation for this research and basically we know that today template attack is one of the most powerful side channel attacks. It's very powerful because of its profiling step. But unfortunately in order to build the template for this attack, in order to build the model, we need to acquire a lot of data. Basically, we have to be able to control the device that we are trying to attack. We have to be able to set or choose uh, some known keys, basically. So, our idea was to try to build a template uh, using a very small amount of known keys. So, trying to relax this hypothesis or about the control over the device. And we did it uh, using a semi-supervised technique that I'm going to explain in a couple of minutes. Here is a structure of the following presentation. I would like to start with a step-by-step -step tutorial, how to use a semi-supervised template attack, how to build the model. Uh, then uh, I would like to show you some of our results while discussing them. And uh, then we'll have some final words and a couple of highlights about future works. So, let's start with the tutorial. First of all, I would like to present you the example that I'm going to use during this presentation. So, uh, on one hand we have the crypto device uh, <coughs> and that we are trying to attack. And let's say that uh, this crypto device implements uh, a block cipher like AES, for example, and uh, let's imagine that this device manipulates only one byte at a time. This might be easily generalized to more bits and more bytes. On the other hand, we have the attacker, uh, and the attacker is not able to set uh, some chosen keys uh, while he is using a crypto device. But basically, he is able to collect power traces while uh, different people uh, use this device. And he has his own key uh, that he knows. Uh, so he has one known uh, value for one key. And he has several uh, friends that uh, also have uh, known keys and that are willing to share basically their values in order to build the model for this attack. This is the example that we are going to use during this presentation, the scenario, if you want. So let's start uh, the, the actual tutorial. First step is a data acquisition. Uh, and in this case, we are going to acquire two sets of data. Uh, first one is called uh, set U for unknown keys. And these are acquired while people are unknown, people are using this uh, crypto device, crypto system. So we don't know uh, the value of the key related to each power trace in the set U. Uh, and uh, at the same time we are going to acquire another set of traces uh, which will be labeled K for known keys and uh, this is a small set of power traces that is acquired while uh, uh, the attacker and uh, his accomplices uh, are using their own keys, so known uh, keys. In the following uh, parts uh, of these uh, model building uh, steps, we're going to analyze the set K, extract some knowledge of it, and then we are going to use it in order to build a template uh, with the set U. So let's start. Well, first thing that we are going to do, we are going to choose a byte, uh, byte B, that we are going to attack, and we'll write down the values of this byte that we know about. And uh, just after that, we are going to write down the humming weight of each of one of these values. Uh, then we are going to run through all uh, points on each power trace that we have from the set K and use some dependency measurement uh, technique like mutual information or power uh, Pearson correlation uh, with power and the humming weight in order to find out uh, which is the best point to attack, which is the best point to use in our model. Uh, let's say, for, for example, that uh, in this case the red point is the best one that we found, and now we can go to the next step. 
This next step uh, is basically uh, an analysis about the power consumption of the device uh, and um, what we are going to do. What we are going to take this best point that we found uh, just before and we are going to plot these values depending on the humming weight of the byte that we, uh, we have. Uh, for In this example, let's say that uh, this function of the power consumption depending on the humming weight is something like that. Uh, but basically this attack works if this function is a strictly increasing function or a strictly decreasing function. It works both ways. So uh, now we have uh, analyzed the set K and we are going to use uh, this knowledge in order to build the template from the set U. Uh, so what we are going to do, we are going to extract points from all traces from the set U, the best points that we found just before, and we are going to use this data set as an input to a clustering algorithm. In our case we used the algorithm called clustering around Medwitz, and what we also have to do, we have to submit uh, Another input to the clustering algorithm basically is a number of clusters, a number of groups that we'd like to create. Since we are trying to attack one byte at a time and we are trying to extract just the humming weight of this byte, so we have from 0 to 8 basically 9 different values, so we are going to uh, create 9 groups or 9 clusters. Uh, now we have the input, we are going to run our clustering algorithm and the result might look something like that. So at this point we know that each cluster, each group, represents uh, one humming weight of the byte B that we are trying to attack. But we don't know yet which cluster represents which humming weight exactly. So we have to label uh, clusters, we have to put some labels on, on these groups. And to do that we are going to take the average value from each cluster and uh, after that we are going to sort all clusters uh, depending on these average values and in this example we are going to sort these clusters in an increasing order of these average values that we extracted uh, while um, why is this increasing order basically it's because what we have found a couple of steps uh, before uh, that the power consumption was increasing in this example so when we sort uh, our clusters, the result might look something like that. And uh, at this point we know the humming weight of the byte B relate to each from all clusters and basically the order of each cluster gives us its humming weight from 0 to 8. Uh, now we can, we can choose to attack all uh, power traces at the same time or we might want to choose just one power trace and continue the attack with this single power trace if we want. Uh, so basically we started with a set U. We knew nothing about uh, values of the keys uh, in the set U and now we have all these humming weights for the byte B that are known. So how do we recover the key uh, once this is done? What we suggest in the paper is uh, using uh, all humming weights, so we're going to run through these steps for each byte. We'll have all humming weights of all bytes um, as a data uh, input to a set solver or an optimizer uh, within uh, another input, uh, its description of the crypto algorithm within a message ciphertext pair. And uh, we'll be able to retrieve the key this way. Uh, so this was the end of the first part. Now I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about our results. And first question that you might uh, ask uh, is basically how many accomplices do we need or how many known keys we need in the set K. Uh, and basically we need uh, different humming weights in the set K for each byte that we are trying to attack. We need at least three different humming weights uh, and we don't need all nine of them. Uh, 
So even if we have uh, four or five Hamming weights, different Hamming weights, it's enough to find uh, the best point in terms of mutual information and the attack works uh, fine. So this figure is meant to show that even if we have a small uh, amount of known keys, like 10 for example, uh, for, for this example we have 10 known keys, we have very good chances of finding 3, 4, 5 and even 6 different Hamming weights for each byte that we are trying to attack. We also did a couple of experiments uh, using a microcontroller that implemented first round of AES. So this first experiment was um, a low noise scenario experiment. Uh, as you might see, we used uh, uh, all possible values uh, for, the, for the attack byte. We use the average for uh, noise filtering. Uh, and we compared semi-supervised template attack with the template attack uh, with two uh, other attacks that use uh, machine learning clustering techniques and we was uh, what's called a simple model. Mm. So mm, basically uh, a simple model is a model that always gives the most probable uh, answer as a value. So in this case it's 4, so the Hamming weight is equal 4. Uh, it doesn't depend on the power trace. So as you might see uh, on the success rate, semi-supervised template attack is better than simple model, uh, but it's slightly mm, worse than template attack, a random forest and support vector machine. And this might be explained by the fact that template attack, as well, of, as, well as random forest and support vector machine, use a lot of known keys in order to build the template, in order to build the model while semi-supervised template attack use a very small amount of uh, known keys for the model building phase of the attack. So after that we did a second experiment that was a generalization, a more noisy scenario if you, if you want. So we used less uh, traces, uh, random traces, only random values and less filtering of the noise. And uh, we have a very similar picture. Uh, in this case, we also uh, have a semi-supervised -sup template attack uh, success rate slightly lower than template attack random forest and support vector machine. And once again, this might be explained by the fact that these tr three um, use all known keys, all available known keys in order to build the template, while semi-supervised template attack use a very small amount of known keys in the template building phase. So what's next? After that we uh, had a simulation of what might happen if we increase the amount of noise uh, in each trace uh, that we use in some supervised template attack. Uh, the worst case scenario would be to drop uh, down to uh, the success rate of a simple model and at least in our uh, simulations it wasn't the case so semi-supervised template attack is uh, success rate is higher than the simple model success rate. Uh, another interesting result that we obtained is about clustering. Uh, basically, when we group power traces into clusters, uh, what might happen? A power trace might be misclassified, so put in a wrong group with other traces. Uh, and what we found out is basically that when it happens we have a very very good chances that the real Hamming weight is basically the prediction by semi-supervised template attack plus or minus one. So it means that the power trace was classified in the neighbor uh, group, in the neighbor cluster instead of the correct one. And this kind of information might also be used uh, when we are submitting uh, our results from SSTA to uh, a set solver or an optimizer. So we don't have to submit the exact values for the Hamming weight. We might use uh, this information about the fact that probably uh, it's a neighbor cluster that we should use. So this was the end uh, of the experiments and results. And now uh, a couple of words about conclusions. So, uh, semi-supervised template attack indeed uh, relaxes uh, hypothesis about the control over the device. 
so we, we need only uh, a small amount of known keys in order to build the template. It is possible to build the template using a, a few known keys, basically. Uh, and big advantage of this attack is that it's, it allows uh, to attack a lot of power traces at the same time, a lot of users. Uh, basically, all users in the set U, uh, the set U that was acquired with unknown keys, might be attacked at the same time by this attack. Uh, and the success rate of this attack, as well as the amount of known keys that we need in order to build the template, suggests that semi-supervised template attack might be used in practice. Now a couple of words about future works. Uh, first thing, uh, while we are building the template for this attack, we are using a couple of tools, such as a dependency measurement technique. Uh, in our case, it was mutual information or clustering. Uh, in our case, we used the algorithm called clustering around medoids. Uh, it's interesting to see what might happen if we change these parameters and how it affects the success rate of this attack. Uh, another interesting uh, future work is an adaptation to a multivariate attacks. Uh, and uh, we would also like to study protected devices and see what happens with other algorithms and other type of devices such as FPGAs and uh, uh, application-specific integrated circuits. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation uh, and please contact me if you have any questions about semi-supervised template attack. Thank you.